Hello everyone, my name is James Chibwebe. I'm a distinguished professor of astrophysics at the Department of Mathematical Sciences, University of South Africa. I also chair the science committee of the African Astronomical Society, which was relaunched in 2019 and, well, has made a huge stride over the last five years. I will give you a highlight of some of the developments or improvements that I have seen um, being associated with the African Astronomical Society over the past five years. And one of them includes the quality of the astronomical output from the continent. I have over the years observed the quality of abstracts that we have received in the annual conferences of African Astronomical Society over the past five years. And this has improved significantly in its quality. Um, it has also improved in the quantity of abstracts that we uh, receive for the annual conferences. The implication of this is that we are getting more people interested and also bringing in the younger generation, both the masters and the PhD students, to interact more with the senior within the society. And that's definitely will engender growth in, in astronomy in the continent. Another area that I have seen improvement is the uh, number of facilities that are accessible to African astronomers. Um, we have within the continent uh, a couple of instruments, especially optical telescopes, both in, uh, in South Africa, like the SALT telescope and a number of other optical um, uh, telescopes in Sutherland, which are accessible to African astronomers. Of course, there are some other telescopes like the one in um, Egypt and in Morocco and the effort by EFAS and of course members of EFAS to bring this together and form a synergy to have all these instruments performing groundbreaking science and being accessible to Africans is really, really encouraging. We've also seen efforts to develop new instruments. I'm going to highlight not all of them because of time, but some of them. There is the ROTC telescope. ROTC telescope is an optical instrument that exists uh, in different parts of the world. There is one in Australia and there is one in Namibia, which is no longer in use. It was decommissioned a couple of years ago. EFAS has taken up the responsibility to uh, investigate the possibility of reactivating this instrument for the use by African astronomers. So what this means is if we succeed in doing that, there will be an optical instrument that students from the continent and of course researchers can easily assess and use for education, outreach and some level of research. There is also the upcoming African Millimeter Telescope. Uh, this will be the first of its kind in the continent. We have no millimeter uh, type facility in the continent. Yes, we do have the Meerkat and the Hatrao telescope and also the 32 meter Ghana radio telescope, but these operate at centimeter wavelength, L band, C band, K band. When I say L band, it's just about something around 800 to 1.7 gigahertz. Uh, C band is mostly 4 to 8 gigahertz. Uh, K band is 22 gigahertz. Uh, th these frequency ranges are definitely in the centimeter regime. But for Africa to uh, contribute to the event horizon project of imaging the black holes or imaging the event horizon of black holes, we do need a facility to exist on the continent. And that would really, really change the UV coverage of what is currently existing. So, the effort to build the African Millimeter Telescope led by the Radboud University in the Netherlands and of course with, in collaboration with the uh, University of Namibia and the contribution by EFAS, of course with, with people like myself being involved, is really going to be huge over the next five years. The biggest one, of course, is the Meerkat. Okay, that's, that's currently the most sensitive centimeter band instrument in the world. Meerkat is already undergoing an expansion, what we call Meerkat Plus, which will have additional 16 dishes uh, coming, uh, contributed by the Max Planck and extended to longer baselines up to 20 kilometers. So we look forward to Meerkat Plus, 
we also look forward to the time when Miyakat will eventually become part of the SKA, which is already under construction, and all these will be in the continent. Yes, the growth of AFAS is corresponding with a time when Africa is seeing a huge growth in astronomical facilities. So, I look forward to the future. I look forward to a future where EFAS and members of EFAS will play very leading role in some of these facilities or the science being done with some of these facilities in the future. We don't want to host facilities that will only be used for the science output by people outside the continent. Yes, we want to collaborate. We want people outside to use instruments in our continent. But we also want our own astronomers to do the science. We don't want to just be the host of facilities. We also want to be users of those facilities in producing groundbreaking science. So I see EFAS in the next five years leading a group of astronomers from this continent and also members who may be from outside the con continent who want to associate with us, growing from strength to strength, leading projects that are groundbreaking, doing excellent science with the facilities that are upcoming, and more importantly, training more astronomers from this continent to take advantage of the instruments we have upcoming. I wish EFAS all the best. Uh, and look forward to the next five years of EFAS assistance. Thank you.